Hi, this is Lou. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a brand new season on YouTube. My theme this season is experiment. And so I'm going to be setting out some experiments that I can do, that you can do with watercolor to try and get the most out of the medium. I'm going to be trying out some things that are new to me, trying out some different watercolor media, watercolor techniques, and other things that go well with watercolor. I'll be looking for inspiration in pattern making and mark making and ways of incorporating different textures and some of my favorites, metallics. I'll still be creating projects that you can join in with and follow along step by step. But what I hope to do this year is to inspire you to experiment too. Find out what it is that you like and to have a play with your supplies. And what I've not shown on YouTube before, but I plan to with this series, is to take you along with me as I develop a collection of artwork. This all be based on watercolour as its main medium, but will incorporate lots of other things as well, especially some gold leaf. And I'll be sharing some different ways of mounting, presenting, and preparing your work to go out into the world. So I hope that you'll join in with me. Let's get our paints out and start seeing what we can do with them. So for today, to start off with, I'm just going to be working with watercolour and water and just seeing what different techniques and methods I can use to get different effects with using different amounts of water and different ways of applying water. I've created this little palette of watercolours, which is a little subset of all of the colours that I own. I do this every few months and work with a kind of a slightly limited palette. Last seasons were very bright and vibrant and for this I've kind of gone the opposite way and I've picked this palette of really muted colours. But this will work with whatever colours you fancy. And today I'm just going to work with one colour. Uh, I'm going to work with Payne's Grey. Uh, it's a really nice colour and I think it works well for experiments because it's, it's a really rich pigment. There's a lot of uh, intensity to it. So you can really see the effects because you get a real difference between the light areas and the dark areas. But this will work with any colour, so uh, feel free to have a play. And actually it's useful to do it with a few different uh, pigments as well because they do behave differently and you'll get to see the, the results of how they behave when you kind of get to know them and play with them. So I'm really interested to know, are you a person who likes really formal, structured experimentation? Uh, or are you somebody who likes to just go for it and see what happens? Uh, for this, I'm going to start with a really formal, structured exercise. I've listed a number of ways in which I can apply water and watercolour together, and I want to see what different effects I can get. And I've created six little sections on my uh, watercolour paper, and I'm going to do a different technique in each section. But then later on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, uh, a much more free form abstract, flowy, just going for it type of experiment and find out what I learned from that too. So I'm starting with the watercolour paper. I want to create a series of works at the end of this season, all on cotton watercolour paper. So I'm doing all of my experiments on cotton paper as well. And this is a Fabriano Artistico block um, with 100% cotton paper. Um, I know it's expensive working and on cotton paper just to do you know swatching or experiments uh, and you don't have to but um, for this particular project I really want to use cotton paper so that's why I'm using this. And then I've got my watercolours, I've got one brush that I'm going to be using for this, this is a number 10 round and you just need something that's going to be big enough to uh, apply the paint to the paper so um, a flat brush or a, a round brush doesn't really matter for this. I've got my usual water in jars and I'm going to try and keep my two jars separate. So I've got one for rinsing out my brush and getting kind of dirty and then I'll have one where I'll try and keep it nice and clean to use clean water. You can pick up the water with your brush but I've also got a pipette. Um, you can get these quite cheaply and it just allows you to pick up water and then kind of drop it back down in a kind of controlled way. Um, Again, it's an experiment, so I'm trying that. I've also got a squirty bottle here 
Um, so this I just got from the garden centre, it's very cheap. Um, and it's got like a little nozzle here that you can adjust the spray. You can kind of get like quite big droplets or quite fine droplets. And you could play around with that as well to see if you can get different effects. I'm probably going to be making quite a lot of watery mess today. So I've got a fair bit of paper towel on hand to dab up any excess um, and to clean my brush and all those kind of things. And I've also got a couple of sheets of copy paper just to um, just on hand, just to mask out different parts of this uh, test paper, because I think I'm going to need that. I've already taped my paper, so I'm just using regular masking tape and um, I've just created some little rectangles on here. Um, I've got six to start with and I'm going to do six little experiments. The first one I want to do, I want to do a gradient that goes from kind of quite a dry brush effect to quite a wet brush effect. So I'm going to start with not a completely dry brush. I do want to get a fair bit of water in my brush. When I'm working with work workshops, what, one of the things I've found is that um, quite a few people, not everybody, but quite a few people don't like putting water on their brush. Um, so I want to get it nice and wet. And then I can take off some of the excess just by rubbing it up against the side of the jar. So now I've got a damp brush and I can apply that into my paint. So I'm just going to rub my brush against the pan. So I'm using pan paints here. So uh, they are already in these little pans and they're all already dry. If you're using tube paints, you just need to squeeze a little bit out and you still need to add water to it a little bit. Uh, but uh, but not so much. And then I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to start making brush strokes. Random directions. And I can try smearing my brush at sideways angles. And I'm kind of running out of the paint on this brush now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more water. So again, I'm, I'm uh, washing my brush. You can still see there was still a little bit of paint left on there. And I'm going to take some water off, but not as much as last time. And I'm going to add that into the pan. Give it a good swish around. And continue. And you should be able to see that my strokes are bigger this time that I'm getting more paint down with the water. And I think that's a, a good little extra bit. So then I want to do the same thing again. So I'm going to take my brush, give it a good swoosh around in the water. And this time I'm not going to take any extra off. I'll give it a bit of a shake so it doesn't drip everywhere. But I'm just going to add a little bit more water into that and see how much further I can get it to go. And then for the last one, I'm not going to wash, I'm not going to add any more paint to the brush. There's still paint on there. I just want to make it more wet. So I'm just going to dip it in the water again. And now you can see, hopefully, this is really wet. There's quite a bit of water on there on that brush. In fact, I might even add some more over here. There we go. So on this bit of the painting, I can see, if I tilt the page, you should be able to see the paint running because it's kind of sitting on top of the water on top of the page. So that's experiment number one. I'm going to wash my brush. Oops, I told you there'd be splashes of water here. There we go. Let's dab that off. For my second one, I'm going to create an even wash of colour. So for this, I'm going to take some of my wet paint from the pan. Still got some water in there from when I, uh, from when I was using the last, doing the last section. And I'm going to move it to the palette here. I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. And I'm going to mix up as much as I think I need for this section. The more water you add to it, the lighter the colour should be. And I'm going to take it and just run a line of it along the top of this section. 
Now, if you have taped your paper down, then you won't be able to lift it up. But if you've got your paper on a block or on a board and you can lift it up, you can see that this bead of water starts sitting here and you can use that and just draw it down the paper. So I've got this kind of droplet of painty water here right on the edge and I can just keep moving the brush backwards and forwards and drawing it down. Let's add a little bit more at this point. I'm just going to keep going until the bottom of the section. Oh, now because I've lifted it up, I've got a run down here. I'm just going to dab that up so I don't spoil the next bit. And that should give you a perfectly flat and even finish. You might get a little bit of extra at the bottom. Again, I'm going to dab that up so it doesn't run. For this next section, I want to try my little squirty bottle. So what I want to do is I'm going to put some paint down on here and then I'm going to use the squirty bottle to see if I can make it move. So I want some nice concentrated paint. So I'm going straight into the pan. And I'm just going to put a few dabs with my brush. That'll do, I think. And then this is why I brought out the paper. So I can put some paper down here and I can also use some here to shield this bit. I'm going to move that out of the way. This is going to get a little bit wet and a little bit messy. Um, you could put some more paper down on your table if you're worried about that as well. And I'm just going to spray. Right. Oh, and it's, I'm spraying and it's starting to move. Let's see if I can get it going in different directions. Oh, and that's very wet now. Okay. I think I might need a little bit of damage control on this bit. The message on this is it's very easy to overdo it. I think this might be something that might work better on a, a bigger, a bigger piece of paper, a bigger swatch. Collect some of that excess from around the edges and I'll let that dry. For the next one I want to create another kind of just a wash of paint. This time I'm not going to lift my page because there's a lot of water sitting on the surface. So I'm just going to spread it out nice and flat and allow my brush to do the blending for me. I'm not going to leave this like this. I'm going to use my pipette to add some extra water into this. So one interesting experiment might be to see how long you leave this before you add the water. I've got my clean water here. Let's just put it to the side. Let's bring that in. And I'm going to use the pipette just to drag some water up into here and then start putting dots of it on the kind of the damp and drying paint. And you should be able to see interesting little cauliflowery shapes starting to fall. Let's just do another one there. Let's leave it like that. Of course, you can do this kind of thing as well by dabbing a brush in the water and then allowing drops to kind of hang off the edge of your brush and then dropping them onto your paint but uh, it's much easier to control with a pet, I think. For my next section, I'm going to use my clean water and I'm going to do this on the, two, the next two sections. I'm going to do just paint the whole thing with clean water. So 
all you'll be able to see is a little bit of shine on the surface. Just make sure it's all nicely covered. So that's what and then I'm going to do two and then I'm going to set a timer. I'm just going to set my stopwatch going. I'm going to start painting wet paint into this one and then after uh, four minutes I'm going to paint into this one. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this time and I'm going to take some of the uh, paint directly from the pan so it's nice and intense and I'm going to drop some spots of it on here. And let's take some of the more watery paint from the pan as well, from the palette I mean. Let's put that in there. Right, that's four minutes. So I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing as I've done here into this damp section. And I think I left it too long. One, I'm going to try and lift some of the paint so I'm going to paint some little circles a nice nice bit of wet surface on there and allow it to sit there for a while and then I'm going to dab up that water and you do get like a slightly lighter impression. Oh, rub the paper a bit too much on that one. This effect becomes more pronounced with different types of pigments which are better for lifting and different types of paper as well. Now I'm just going to label these so I can remember what they are so that if I come back to it in a year or so's time I'll remember what each of these techniques was and what I did to get this effect. So for this experiment project I want to create a series of artworks at the end that use some of these experiments in different ways. So I've started um, creating little works on bits of paper using some of these techniques and um, I'll show you what I've been doing on these. So these two were done using this method here where I wet a section of the paper and actually this didn't work as I expected uh, because I've got really sharp lines on the outside of these little uh, blobs where I placed my paint um, but this is what I did to start with so I did these to start with and I did this exactly the same way so I wet this area and this area painted a circle of water this one I painted in straight away and you can see that the colors run much more than it did on my little sample piece and this is the one I did after four minutes and you can see I've got a really soft cloudy effect whereas here the edges are really sharp now it's possible that I put more water on this one than I did that one, but also they're on slightly different papers. They're still 100% cotton, so I'd expect them to behave similarly. Um, so I think that must be it. It must just be the amount of water I put on this one. I must have put more water on than I did that one. Um, and things like uh, your temperature and your climate will affect that as well. So how warm or dry it is on a particular day. This one, I really quite like this effect, but it actually ended up with a big puddle in the middle and it dried really slowly and you get these kind of lovely tendril shapes, but it wasn't really what I intended. So this was my second go. 
trying to get the uh, paint to spread a little bit and still get some of those kind of soft uh, tendrilly bits but not but to kind of control it a bit better so there's those two and then for this one I did exactly the same as I did here. I painted a wash of the uh, Payne's Grey and then I dropped water in with a pet. And because I painted this quite slowly, it was kind of wet at the bottom and drier at the top. And I ended up with kind of a drier area with smaller blobs from the pet. And down at the bottom, I got kind of these bigger, softer, uh, ones with uh, with less of the harsh edges between them. With this one I really like this effect and this is what I did with the spray bottle and I did it in exactly the same way as I did this. I placed uh, a few blobs of the colour down and then I used the spray bottle to uh, to move the, the water around and I get this really soft cloudy effect but it's also got it's got some hard edges in there as well so you can see that there's like uh, little bits of uh, little kind of white mottled areas where the kind of the spray bottle water didn't reach and that's an effect that you get uh, I think with a spray bottle that you wouldn't get if you just soaked the page or if you just painted water all over the page I think these little white bits um, that you get in here you see that bit I think that comes particularly because you've used the spray bottle. Now for those of you who are much more of a let's get stuck in and see how things work this is what I'm going to do here and I've just got another blank sheet of paper and I'm going to use a few different size brushes for this one. I'm going to start with a big one and then I can work towards the smaller one um, adding more detail. So I've got a, a flat brush here, this one's three quarters of an inch. I'm going to use this just to uh, put down some big shapes on the paper. Now for all of my experiments so far I've just used Payne's Grey but for this one I'm going to mess around with cut different colours. I'm going to have a play and see what I fancy using. So I want some areas where I've got less water, I want some areas where I've got more water. So my brush is already a little bit damp uh, but if I add a little bit more water I can pick a different um, colour. I can add water directly into the pan. This one is buff titanium, it's a lovely creamy colour and I use it all the time. Now I can take it to uh, one of my mixing wells, I could mix it with one of the colours that's already in here, or I could use it directly on the brush. So let's do that. And because my brush hasn't been terribly wet, I've got some kind of broken edges on my big circle shape. Well, that's okay, I could go back and fill them all in a little bit more. Um, or I can just leave them a little bit broken. It's up to it's up to you. It's what you fancy. Now I can take a little bit more water on the brush and make another shape next to that and see what happens when that colour floods into the wet area. Let's go for a different colour now, and I'm going to go for this colour here, which is a quinacridone burnt orange. It's a much stronger colour, and I can make my big shape there. Let's add another splodge of really vibrant colour in there. And I quite like this area here where the, the brush is broken on the surface. And you can see that colour moving into the, the damp area there. Right now I want to go for some of that Payne's Grey again. So I'm going to clean my brush and pick a little Payne's Grey and let's put a big circle of that here. And in fact, I want this one to be a little wetter, so I'm going to take some more water and add that. I can take a bit more pigment, put that in one area and let it spread out. And because this is now quite wet, I should get quite some, some, some nice soft areas where that colour's bleeding out. I've still got quite a bit of that Payne's Grey on my brush, so I'm going to go into the water again and I'll make a much more watery mark over here. Now I've got two really kind of vibrant blue areas and I kind of want a much more neutral. I want to go back to these kind of tones here. So I'm going to go with some raw sienna. No, it's not raw sienna, it's raw umber. Um, which is a kind of, it's kind of yellowy brown colour. It's a bit like yellow ochre. And 
where it mixes with the Payne's Grey, I'll get a kind of greeny tone. I can add a little bit of burnt umber into that wet area to warm it up a little bit. Right, let's dab some of that in there. And that will kind of counteract that greeniness a bit. I think I've got room for one more down here. And I might go back to the buff titanium I started with. There we go. I think I want something up here, but I don't want too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my brush off and I've just got a damp brush and I'm going to create another little swirl there, just going into those areas. Now this one's still wet. This one's kind of dry, so I'm going to get some, probably some kind of colour flowers on this area here. And then I think that's um, maybe all I'm going to use the, the big brush for. What I might do now is take my medium sized brush and put some, some splodges in there. It's a technical term. And if I splodge over the top of dry areas, I should get some quite solid shapes with clean edges. If I splodge over damp areas, I'll get some more kind of lost edges. There, I think that's good. Maybe I'll put a few down here as well. Something like that. So I'm going to leave this to dry and then I may come in with some more mark making a little bit later on with the smaller brush. exercise like this you learn all sorts of things about the kind of marks you like to make and about how the way the paint functions. So these like splodges here where I put them over the top of where the paint was dry you get this kind of quite sharp crisp edge and then where they went over the top of the the wet painted areas you've got much softer marks where they kind of blend out a little bit. You've also got the kind of the dry brush effect of the uh, the edges of some of these shapes where they're a little bit drier, where the paint's kind of skipped over the surface and you get these kind of rough edges and the same up here. You've also got the kind of the flows where the two areas bleed together, where you've got paint from one area that's kind of flowing into another area that's still wet. And just here I painted wet over dry and it's very very subtle but you can just see the edge of that shape going through there and you um, haven't got much of a kind of a cauliflower effect on there uh, but you do get a little kind of bit softening of that that colour there. So I find projects like this to be really useful uh, for just getting to know my paints, how they function and to uh, get a feel for how the brushes work, what you know the different size brushes and how they how they contribute to the kind of marks that you can make and mixing up different types of uh, of concentrated uh, washes as well so having some real concentrated paint and then some slightly wetter washes and then dabbing more concentrated areas of paint into wetter areas and just seeing what happens 
I find them really useful for that kind of thing. So I hope you'll give this a go. Uh, I'm really interested to know which technique you think uh, suits you more. So are you more of a, I'm just going to throw some paint at a page and see what happens and get to know my paints that way? Or are you more the kind of person who wants to do a kind of a technical set exercise to learn about how the paints function? Or maybe you like a bit of both and for different reasons. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this and you found it helpful. Um, I'd really like to see your watercolour experiments. So uh, anything that you make after following my tutorials, you can post to Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. You can also see the results of all my experiments there. Um, so the ones I show on this channel, plus some extras. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Thanks. Bye bye.